Well, not a day goes by without a new story about an endangered species and concern over the future of our precious wildlife from frogs to whales to eagles and so many more. Well, Isabel Grock has been passionate about conservation since she was a child. She is a conservationist, a filmmaker, and now author of a series of books aimed at young people. Isabel, hi, welcome back. Thank you, Gloria. And thank you for bringing in a copy of the first book in the series, and this one's called Gone is Gone. Uh, uh, pretty well nails it, doesn't it? <laughs> so, what, I mean, why did you choose this as a title? Why this title, Gone is Gone, is a pretty serious title for... I guess, a, a book aimed at uh, young people. But the wildlife crisis is, is real, it's here. And every day we're bombarded with headlines about dramatic ecological changes, about the extinction crisis. We've learned that uh, over a million of species of plants and animals are pushed to the brink of extinction. And I'm a parent. My children talk to me about this, and I've talked to other parents, and children know and are anxious about the climate crisis, the extinction crisis. So they are wondering what they can do. And as parents, we often feel a little helpless, hopeless on what, what is it that we can do to help and act before it's too, too late. So this book, the purpose of this book was to educate children and younger uh, generations about the crisis, what's happening, but also give them reason to hope and action, what they can do to well, help change that. You've been doing just that uh, with, with your, your films, your, your documentaries as well. So what can a book accomplish that that, that can't? Um, I think it's um, this book talks about a range of um, animals, whether they're close to us in British Columbia, whether they're far away, like elephants and cheetah. So I really wanted to show a range of species, local and far away from where we live, and also the people who act to protect them, to understand them, to, to, to make a difference. So really young people could look at the range and, and see where do I fit in in this and what can inspire me to make a difference as well. Well, when you were younger, um, what was your experience or awareness of this whole issue of animals that just may not be around uh, during your lifetime? I grew up in the, in the south of France uh, in a small town far from the ocean. And I remember very clearly that one day on TV, somebody said there was terrible news. They said blue whales were going to be extinct. And that really, that caught my attention. I never seen whales, I'd never been close to them, but that had a devastating impact on me. Said, wow, how is that possible this large, powerful animal could go extinct? At the same time, they were talking about how groups of people, Greenpeace and other people, were fighting to save these whales and make a difference. And that inspired me. I thought, oh, somebody else is doing something and maybe I can think about how I can do something. And I was a little girl, but that really stayed with me. And today I feel grateful that thanks to people acting for the well to save these large animals, today we can see blue whales. And many years later, when I moved to Canada, I saw blue whales for the, for the first time. We did it. I we did it. Did it. <laughs> OK. Well, it's interesting that your audience is young for this book. But I mean, really, just going through it, you don't, you don't hold back with your message? I mean, are, are you worried at all about sort of couching it or is, are they going to be too worried? They are already worried. They know about this. Kids today are very, we live in a connected world. They're very aware of what's going on and, and they have a voice. They, they can take it. When you see someone like Greta, uh, she, she's acting. And I've talked to kids who feel have been inspired by her and others that they realize one person can make a difference, can make a change. So yes, they need to have the information and not, I don't think they want to be not told the truth. They, know, they already know it. They just want to have the tools to, to do something about it. And I think Jane Goodall really gives that message of, uh, of hope. And, um, and as parents, we can really help that and we can support our children to, to act. So Jane Goodall, when I went to a talk um, by her a few years ago, the first thing she does 
she talks about her mother and how her mother supported her through her entire life to, to support her work. And I think we have a responsibility as parents to do just that, to talk with our children, support them and help them face the climate crisis. And you have a foreword by Jane Goodall in your book as well. But who would be some of your, you know, your local heroes, I guess, that might be making a difference here in, in British Columbia or closer to home? There are many local conservation heroes that I've been fortunate to, to meet over the years. One of them that comes to mind is um, David Hancock, who's been here in the Fraser Valley protecting and being an advocate and studying eagles, bald eagles, for over 65 years, and he's in, he's in his 80s now. But he started as a young, young uh, boy um, connecting to bald eagles. I think he was just 11 when he uh, rescued an injured eagle. And that started off a, a lifetime of conservation and care and also educating others about how to look after eagles in their backyard. So he helped people in British Columbia connect to the precious wildlife they have in their, in their backyard particularly eagle nest trees, putting um, little camps uh, so people can actually see them nest close to home. Well, you, you opened up by talking about, you know, the, the worry, the, the concern about species here and around the world, but you also said what you hope to impart is some, is some hope, in fact. So how, how do you keep that hope alive, that, that we can intervene in time to save some of these species? Hope is very important, and I really wanted to write this book um, not from a doom and gloom perspective, but from a sense of hope and optimism that we can actually do something and make a difference. I believe strongly that wildlife conservation starts on our doorstep in our backyard. So anything that we can do locally, whether it's to save a, a piece of wetland or be in nature or sign a petition or rescue, uh, volunteer for a rescue group, all of these things combine make a difference. Every single uh, action we take can make a difference. And we live a, in a very connected world. So what we do, what you do in your backyard, also other people are doing it in their backyard. And you can get to see that and be inspired that we're all together in this. Well, your book is going to be launched officially uh, on the 26th of this month at the Vancouver Museum. What can we expect? Yes, so I will be at the Museum of Vancouver. I'm very pleased to return to, to the museum where my film with Doxa to People was, uh, was shown in May. Um, it, it will be in combination with the very last days of an exhibition they have called Wild Things, The Power of Nature in Our Life, which ends on September 29. And at this event, we'll share stories of the books and also I've invited some conservation organizations to, to again, talk talk to people that will be there about how they can act such groups such as Nature Kids BC, for example, that gets children in the wild and act for nature. Isabel Grock, thank you very much. It's a, it's a beautiful piece of work and uh, thank you for what you do. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it.